All right, ready to set sail again? Always up for an adventure. What are we diving into today? Well, this time we're going back to Manjira's story, chapter seven of Heart of a Samurai, to be exact. Ship life, they call it, and appropriately enough. Hmm, intriguing. Yeah. And what treasures are we hoping to unearth in this deep dive? We're talking cultural exchange, the challenges and triumphs of learning, and uh, that elusive idea of opportunity, all seen through the eyes of our young castaway. A unique lens for those themes, for sure. Mm. I'm guessing our trusty discussion guide, key passages, and thought-provoking questions will come in handy, as always. Absolutely. And it's a good thing, too, because this chapter is packed with insights. I mean, picture this. You're a teenager, rescued from a deserted island, yes, but then plunked right onto an American whaling ship. Talk about a crash course in a whole new world. Oh, I can only imagine. The sights, the sounds, the smells. And that's even before we get to the language barrier. Right. And speaking of language, the author doesn't let us off easy. Remember how Manjiro struggled with those simple words? Oh, absolutely. Like, C, C, and C all sounding the same to him. It's humorous, sure, but it really drives home how much we take for granted when we share a common language. It makes you realize how much gets lost in translation, literally. And it's not just the words themselves, it's the cultural baggage they carry, like that bit with the bow of the ship versus taking a bow. I mean, imagine trying to explain that to someone who's never encountered those concepts before. It would be like trying to explain the concept of color to someone who's been blind since birth, wouldn't yeah. it? You can describe it, but the true understanding, the lived experience, that's something else entirely. Exactly. And speaking of understanding, one of the things I found fascinating in this chapter was how Manjira's perception of the sailors begins to shift. Ah, uh, yes. They start out as these almost mythical figures to him, right? Mm -hmm. Large, imposing, speaking a language he doesn't understand. Precisely. And remember how terrified he was at first. But as he spends more time on board, he begins to see them as individuals, each with their own quirks and talents. It's amazing how quickly those initial barriers can crumble once you start to see the person behind the stereotype. Absolutely. Like, you've got Edward with his penny whistle, pardon, meticulously crafting his scrimshaw. Even Isaiah with his dry sense of humor. These aren't just scary foreigners anymore, they're people. And that, I think, is a powerful testament to the human capacity for connection, yeah. even across cultures and languages. It's like those shared human experiences, those little moments of humor or kindness, they have a way of bridging even the widest divides. Indeed. But those connections often run deeper than we realize. Take, for instance, their shared fascination with America. Which is hilarious, considering Maniro had never even heard of America before. Can you imagine? this vast, powerful nation, and he's completely oblivious to its existence. I know, right? It's like trying to explain the internet to someone who lived 100 years ago. But here's where it gets interesting, because each sailor has their own, shall we say, unique way of describing America. Ah, yes. A chorus of romanticized descriptions. <laughs> From the finest vessels and strongest men to, let's not forget, the prettiest ladies in all the world, according to Francis. Yeah. It's enough to make you wonder if they're all talking about the same place. Well, it was the 1840s, right? A time of great change and even greater ambition. These weren't just idle boasts. They were expressions of national pride, of hope for a brighter future. But then you have Captain Whitfield, who steps in with this more grounded, almost philosophical view. He doesn't get caught up in all the hype, you know? Just kind of lays it out there. America, he says, it's the land of opportunity. And that's where the heart of it lies, isn't it? All those other sailors, they're focused on the shiny surface, the adventure, the excitement. But Captain Whitfield, mm -hmm. he gets to the core, the potential, mm -hmm. the chance to forge your own path. Though it does make you think, doesn't it? I mean, here's Manjiro practically dropped onto this ship of opportunity, right? It's not like he was out searching for it, exactly. Precisely. It really makes you wonder just how many hidden talents, how many dreams are out there just waiting for that one spark, that chance encounter. Exciting and kind of daunting at the same time, right? Like, what if we're blind to the opportunities right in front of us? But, okay, going back to that phrase, a land of opportunity, it's not a guarantee, is it? Stepping off the boat in America doesn't automatically equal a happy ending. Exactly. It's potential, not a promise. And remember, this is the 1840s we're talking about, the idea of choosing your own destiny, that you weren't bound by, well, by the way, things were always done radical stuff, especially for someone like Manjiro. And it's not just about, like, getting rich or climbing some ladder, right? right? It's bigger than that. Think about how hungry Manjiro is for knowledge, soaking up languages, customs, even how to sail the seas. He's becoming a citizen of the world right there on that ship. And isn't that what true learning is? 
pushing those boundaries, challenging what you thought you knew, really embracing the unknown. Manjur shows us that the most unexpected opportunities often appear when we're willing to step outside our comfort zones. Which actually reminds me of that scene where they're all gathered around him, telling these grand tales of America. Until Captain Whitfield walks in, mm. and they scatter like, well... <laughs> like startled seagulls, yeah. <laughs> it's almost funny, but it highlights the difference in how they see opportunity, you know. The sailors, they're all about the immediate, a good time, a bit of a thrill. But for Manjiro, it's about something lasting. A deeper understanding of himself and the world. He's not just along for the ride. He's charting his own course, even if he doesn't have the whole map figured out yet. And it really underscores the power of learning, even in the toughest environments. Because let's be honest, life on a whaling ship back then, brutal. But even in the middle of danger and hardship, there's this understanding that knowledge, it's valuable. It opens doors, creates possibilities that wouldn't be there otherwise. Absolutely. Just look at Edward, finding comfort and a way to express himself through playing that penny whistle. Small detail, maybe, but it speaks volumes about the human spirit, you know, finding joy and meaning in the most unlikely places. And isn't that a form of opportunity itself? That chance to find those little pockets of beauty and fulfillment, even when life gets chaotic. I think so. It speaks to our need to learn, to grow, to find something bigger than ourselves to connect with. So we've been talking about opportunity as this external thing, a chance meeting, a new place, a lucky break. But what about what's inside? Manjiro could have just accepted his situation, kept his head down. But he doesn't. He chooses to get involved, to learn, to imagine a different future for himself. So it's not just the opportunities themselves, right? It's about being open to seeing them, to grabbing hold when they appear. Makes you wonder, how do we cultivate a little bit of that managerial mindset for ourselves? It's a question worth asking, that's for sure. And I think it starts with, well, with never losing that curiosity, that desire to understand, to explore, to push past the edges of what you think you know. Like Manjiro, right? Always peppering the sailors with questions about anything and everything. He was like a sponge soaking it all up. And that's got to be key, don't you think? That active engagement, always asking why and how, almost like a muscle you can strengthen over time. Precisely. It's one thing to just let information wash over you, but it's another to really engage with it. And to remember, not everyone's going to have the same viewpoint. Remember how each sailor had their own, uh, shall we say, colorful take on America? Ranging from land of the prettiest ladies to godless cannibals, if memory serves. Exactly. And those might not be the most... Uh, accurate or nuanced views yeah but it highlights something important the need to seek out different perspectives it's about putting those puzzle pieces together realizing that no one person has all the answers such a good reminder for us today especially with well with how much information is out there don't just accept something at face value even if it sounds convincing look closer question those assumptions and never be afraid to say what if precisely yeah that's how we challenge our own biases how we keep growing and that in a way, is the ultimate opportunity, isn't it? To become lifelong learners, constantly adapting in a world that never sits still. And you know, it struck me in this chapter how often opportunity seems to come hand in hand with uncertainty. Kind of like the ocean itself, you yeah. know? Vast, unpredictable, maybe even a little scary at times. But also teeming with life, with beauty, with endless possibilities. And that's really the key, isn't it? Shifting your perspective, seeing challenges as potential avenues for growth, for discovery. Choosing to focus on the opportunity part of opportunity, right? Not just the risk, but that wide open potential that comes with embracing the unknown. Beautifully put. And as we leave Manjiro standing at the edge of this incredible journey, his future unwritten, but full of promise, it really makes you think, what uncharted territories are out there waiting for us? Mm. What opportunities are we overlooking because they don't fit our idea of what's possible? Now, that's a powerful thought to end on and one I know I'll be pondering for a while. Because if Manjiro, shipwrecked and alone, could stumble upon such a life-altering opportunity, just imagine what we can achieve when we actively chase after them, when we embrace curiosity and never, ever stop learning.